NBC Sports. Brings you the final game of the 1968 World Series. The Detroit Tigers versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Gillette, makers of new foamy lemon lime shave cream and a new Techmatic adjustable razor. By the more than 1,350 branches in Canada of the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce and by Chrysler Canada Limited and the Dodge, Plymouth, Roots and Simca dealers who sell the quality engineered cars and trucks by Chrysler. And the biggest subject among the ball players today and the Cardinals and the Tigers, the weather. An almost perfect day here in St. Louis, 65 degrees, no humidity, just a slight breeze, a brilliant, bright fall afternoon for Game 7 with Lolich against Gibson. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy of NBC Sports. This is Harry Carey, the voice of the St. Louis Cardinals and roaming the stands as your reporter will be Tony Kubek. And once again, the Cardinals are calling on Bob Gibson to win them a world championship. He won in the seventh game of 64. He won again last year in the seventh game, and he's warming up right now. Of Yugoslavian descent, a free spirit, Mickey Lolich has saved the Tigers in this series. He's out after his third victory today. He's pitching with two days rest. Gibson is pitching with three days rest. And an odd uh, twist in this series has been each club has hit better in the other's ballpark. The Tigers have scored about three times as many runs here as they did in Tiger Stadium, and it's the same for the Cardinals. They scored 20 runs in Detroit and have scored only six runs in their own ballpark. Right now, let's get the observation of Harry Carey. The coach, uh, they've gone through about 35 exhibition games, 162 regular season games, and here now it comes down to just nine innings of baseball to decide the world's champion. Bob Gibson, who pitched the decisive seventh game last year, could become the first pitcher in baseball history to win three games in two different World Series. Mickey Lolich, who's been outstanding for the Tigers, makes it look like a tremendous pitching duel coming up. I don't know who's going to win this one, Kurt. I don't think anybody in the world could possibly know it. Around the field here, the stands are being filled. There'll be another capacity crowd of better than 54,000 people. You know our ballpark now, I'm sure. 330 feet down the left field line. Over in left center, it's 386. And the Detroit Tigers find this ballpark just as friendly to their hitters as their home ballpark, even though this one is supposed to be much harder to hit home runs in. As Norm Cash said, though, Detroit's got the kind of hitters that doesn't make any difference about the ballpark. On around into the right field corner where Bob Gibson is just warming up. It's 330 down that right field line just as it is down the left field line. A perfect day for baseball. You see Gibson getting ready in the right field bullpen and across the way southpaw Mickey Lolich for the Detroit Tigers. Kurt? Bob Gibson has allowed just one run in these two games. He shut the Tigers out here in the opener, and then he allowed them one run at Tiger Stadium. Mickey Lulich came back to even this series in the second game when he defeated the Cardinals 8-1. And, of course, in the big game for the Tigers, the game that kept them alive after allowing the Cardinals three runs in the first inning, he became stronger as the ball game went along. He shut the Cardinals out the rest of the way to win 5-3 and bring the World Series back to to St. Louis. Lolich against Gibson. And now we're going to have the introduction of the players and, and the playing of our Here are the lineup team. for Game 7 of the 1968 World Series. Here is the manager of the Tigers, number 10, Mayo Smith.
Batting first and playing second base, number three, Dick McCollum. Batting second and playing shortstop, number 24, Mickey Stanley. Batting third and playing right field, number six, Al Kaline. Batting fourth and playing first base, number 25, Norm Cash. Batting fifth and playing left field, number 23, Willie Horton. Batting sixth and playing center field, number five, Jim Northrup. Batting seventh and catching, number 11, Bill Freehand. Batting eighth and playing third base, number eight, Don Wirt. Batting ninth and pitching, number 29, Mickey Lolich, who is warming up in the bullpen. And here are the remaining coaches and players of the Detroit Tigers. Now for the St. Louis Cardinals. Here is manager Red Shane Deans. <laughs> Batting first and playing left field, number 20, Lou Brock. Batting, batting second and playing second base, number 25, Julian Javier. Batting third and playing center field, number 21, Kurt Flood. Batting fourth and playing first base, number 30, Orlando Cepeda. Batting fifth and playing third base, number 18, Mike Shannon. Batting sixth and catching, Number 15, Tim McCarver. <laughs> Batting seventh and playing right field, number nine, Roger Maris. <laughs> Batting eighth and playing shortstop, number 27, Dal Maxville. <laughs> Batting ninth and pitching, Number 45, Bob Gibson, who is warming up in the bullpen. And here are the remaining coaches and players of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem, which will be played by Dick Renner's band, and will be sung by the wife of the Cardinal manager, Mrs. Red Shandine.
final game of the 1968 World Series being brought to you from St. Louis as the Cardinals meet the Tigers. Yes, sir. Up Periscope. Up Periscope. Fairing. 150. Ship ahoy. You've got Dodge Fever. Man that Monaco. Design 69. Take a long, slow look. Luxury line of comfort on a 122-inch wheelbase to give you a big car ride at a popular price. Under the hood, there's engine room for up to 440 cubic inches. New Superlight makes night driving super safe. Concealed windshield wipers keep the lines clean as a clipper ship. Inside, you're in command in first-class comfort. Dodge Fever at your Dodge dealer. The umpires will be Tom Gorman of the National League behind the plate, Jim Honacek of the American League at first base, Bill Haller of the American League down the right field line, Stan Landis of the National League at second base, Doug Harvey of the National League down the left field line, and uh, Bill Kinnaman of the American League at third base are grouped around home plate with managers Mayo Smith of the Tigers and Red Shandies of the St. Louis Cardinals. The Commissioner of Baseball, William Eckert. You see Warren Giles, president of the National League, right next to him. Commissioner Eckert will throw out the first baseball, and he does, to catcher Tim McCarver of the Cardinals. Returns the baseball to him. I think they're going to do it again. Well, no, nope, that's it. He doesn't need a retake this time, and the commissioner has the souvenir of the ball that he tossed into play. As Kurt told you, just an absolutely beautifully perfect afternoon for baseball. We pause briefly for a station identification. The Cardinals are taking the field. The lineups. Dick McAuliffe at second base for Detroit. Mickey Stanley at shortstop. Al Kaline, a big hero in right field. Norm Cash having a great series at first base. Willie Horton in left field, the power man for the Tigers. Jim Northrup, the grand slam kid in center field. Bill Freehand behind the plate. Don Wirt at third base. And Mickey Lolich will be the pitcher. There's the Detroit Tiger lineup. All set now. There goes Bob Gibson strolling out to the mound. Trying for his third victory of the series. Bob giving him a big hand. Here's the St. Louis Cardinals lineup. Lou Brock in left field. Julian Javier at second base. Kurt Flood in center field. Orlando Cepeda at first base. Mike Shannon at third base. Tim McCarver, the catcher. Roger Maris in right field against the southpaw. Dow Maxfield at shortstop. And Bob Gibson, the pitcher. And now, before I turn the micro microphone over, I just want to say, not only a great sportscaster, as you all know, but I just want to tell you what a wonderful gentleman and whose friendship I so highly value a tremendous fellow who makes a guy like myself feel so at ease doing a job like this. Just one of the greatest guys in the world, ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Gowdy. Thank you so much, Harry, and good afternoon again, everybody. And Dick McAuliffe in the batter's box. Bob Gibson, 32 years old, from Omaha, Nebraska. Once again, carrying the load for the Cardinals in the final game. Call of batting 261 in this series. A typical Bob Gibson pitch. A fastball on the corner. That's what the Tigers talk about. Is how Gibson's on the corners all the time. Never gives you a good pitch to hit. There's his third. That was the pitch that was so effective in the first game of the series when he set the record-breaking 17 strikeouts. 
No balls, two strikes to Dick McCullough. Playing him as a pull hitter to the right. One and two now. Leave a gap in left center for him. Just missed that corner. Two and two. Gibson struck out 17 in his first start, struck out 10 in his next start. He's had beautiful control. He walked one in the opening game. And he had two walks in game four. That's low inside. So from a two strike count it's a full count now three and two to Dick McCullough. The three two pitch on the way. A high pop foul. The beta squeezed right up against the box seats leans in and has it. Next batter for the Tigers, Mickey Stanley. Who's had five hits and 24 trips, batting 208. All right. Will Mickey Stanley be the regular shortstop for the Tigers next year? Kurt, Many of us are wondering. Kurt, he hasn't done a thing wrong against like charge stop. It's been an amazing performance. Right to the box, a line drive. Stanley lines out to Gibson. Gibson, a marvelous all-around athlete with quick reflexes, good fielder, good batter, helps himself. He wins three or four or five games a year with his fielding and batting besides his pitching arm. And here's been the star of the series for the Tigers, along with Lolich, Al Kaline. Batting 440 in the series and leading the series and runs batted in with eight. He's had 11 hits. A ball to him. Hard to remember when two players have a chance to break the base hit record for a World Series. The record's 13. K line has 11. Brock has 12 hits. There's a foul sailing over in back of the Tiger dugout and out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, you heard. Gibson being interviewed yesterday by Tony Kubek and he was asked who's the toughest hitter in the Tigers and he said K-Line. Al's had three hits and eight times up against him. Two down first inning no score. A one one pitch to K-Line. Ball two two and one. Pitching K-line low in this series. The 2-1 pitch. Low outside, ball three. He hasn't had too many high pitches to look at, and not too many curveballs. A good curveball hitter. That low outside pitch, he's been going to right field and up the middle with it. Three and one. Arm cash on deck. Fouls are back. Three two count. Bob Gibson was knocked out of the was not knocked out of the box once this season. That's how consistent he has been for the Cardinals. He pitched 13 shutouts during the regular season. There's strike three of third and a quarter. So Gibson breezes through the first inning as he sets the Tigers down one, two, three. And at the end of the first half inning, it's the Tigers nothing with the Cardinals coming to bat. In this remote part of Canada, people depend on the river. And by river, regularly as clockwork, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce brings banking service to them. The 
the SS Jean Briand is just one of the more than 1,350 commerce branches in this country. It's typical of commerce determination to make your banking convenient. Think how handy your own commerce branch is. Here's why. Because the commerce has more branches than any other bank on this continent. Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce. One of the world's great banks. Michael Stephen Lowley, 28 years old, trying for his third World Series victory. Study and he flips that ball as he lets it go. And actually, he's quicker to the batter than it looks from the stand. He's what the ball players call sneaky fast. His stuff is always moving. His fastball runs in, runs out. A good sharp slider and curveball, and he's usually down low. And for the first time this year, Lolich is pitching with two days rest. Lou Brock has been effective against Lolich. Brock has had four hits and eight times up in the two games he's faced Lolich. Rock batting 480 for the series. Don Word in shallow at third again against him. He's been going to left field almost exclusively against the left-handed pitcher in this series. The ball to him. All the airs on deck and then Kirk Flood. has been a strikeout pitcher in the series, too. He struck out 17 in two games. Foul left. And he's had very good control. He walked two in game number two here in St. Louis, and he walked only one in game five at Detroit. One ball, one strike to Lou Brock. No score, last of the first inning. Down the ball to the right side. McCullough quickly over to Cash. You don't mess around with that ball in the infield against Brock. You get rid of it. One out. Julian Javier is batting second today for the Cardinals. Having another good series. Batting 391. He's had nine hits and 23 up. He hits left-handers very well uh, during the course of a season, doesn't he, Harry? Yes, I should say uh, about twice as well as he hits right-handers, and he has great power against them, Kurt. He can hit the long ball. One away for the Cardinals, nobody on. Fly ball to center field. Jim Northrup nearly tripped, hauls it in. You saw him catch his spike. Now he'll look over there where he caught those spikes. Would have been disastrous. <laughs> Two down. Kurt Flood has six hits and 24 times up, batting 250. Usually, when Lolich is right, they're hitting the ball on the ground against him when that sinker of his is working. Tough pitch inside. Ball one. I remember Bob Lemon, Harry, he was a sinker ball pitcher, and he liked to have his arm a little bit tired. We'll explain that in a minute. A 1-0 pitch. Quick with that one, 1-1. One one. He always said that if he was strong and fresh, that he had a tendency to get the ball up. And a sinker ball pitcher likes to pitch low. When his arm was a little tired, his sinker would work better, and he'd be keeping the ball down low. Change up, missing. 2-1. Two down, nobody on, no score, last of the first inning. That curve breaks low and inside. Three and one, the curve flood. Lolich has been outstanding in the late season, last year and this year. He likes the cool weather. It's an ideal day for him today. 
Fly ball. That one may drop in right center. K-line. Throws it back in and call it. And there's the first hit of the ball game. Kirk Flood loops the single in the right center. Orlando Cepeda has had seven hits at 25 times up. Batting 280. He leads the Cardinals and runs batted in in the series with six. He's hit two homers. He hit a two run homer against Lolich in Detroit. That Mickey remembers. Blood getting his lead. Bounce foul down the third baseline. Standing room only in the bullpens today. They've got everybody out there. Every pitcher is in the bullpen of both clubs. Blood on first. Lois gets him back. One strike pitch to Cepeda, low, one and one. That's the Tiger bullpen. Out in deep left center. The Cardinals are in right center. The Tiger bullpen in the sun and the Cardinals in the shade. Went after a bad pitch. One ball, two strikes. And uh, there's the Cardinal bullpen. So it is nothing to nothing here in the last of the first inning. The Cardinals have two down. Kurt Flood at first. A one ball, two strike count to Orlando Cepeda. They're deep and straight away for him. A low outside pitch that he went after again. That's two pitches he's gone after Harry out of the strike zone. Uh, he uh, ball must be hard to pick up or something. Uh, he swung and one over his head, and this one was way low and outside, as you pointed out. And he usually has a good strike zone. Kirk Flood at first, two down. Lowlich ready now with his pitch to Cepeda. And that's a foul ball. Hit hard down the left field line. One ball, two strikes. Mickey Lowlich from August 6th until the end of the season won 10 games and lost two. The year before, he won nine out of his last ten decisions from August, uh, the second week of August till the end of the season. Foul ball driven down the right field line. Stands. That's why they place the fader straight away. He can drive the ball to all fields with power. Starting that rhythmic slapping. A one two pitch. Curve breaks low inside. Kurt Lowlich seems to have real good stuff. Stuff's moving. He moves the ball around too, Harry. He's in and out with it. Pitching a little more deliberately today than he did this previous two games. 
Two and two count. Runner going. Ball three. The throw is high and flooded. Let's watch it in slow motion. Bill Freehand had a very tough pitch to handle. His throw is high and flood is in there, as you can see, but he had to pick that pitch right off the hitter's shoe top. So we have our first scoring opportunity of the game now. The Cardinals have flood at second. That's his third stolen base of the series. There are two down and a three and two count to Cepeda. With Mike Shannon on deck. The year before, he won nine out of his last ten decisions from August, uh, the second week of August till the end of the season. Foul ball driven down the right field line. Stands. That's why they plays the fate straight away. He can drive the ball to all fields with power. Starting that rhythmic slapping. A one-two pitch. Curve breaks low inside. Kurt Lowlich seems to have real good stuff. Stuff's moving. He moves the ball around too, Harry. He's in and out with it. Pitching a little more deliberately today than he did the previous two games. Two and two count. Runner going. Ball three. The throw is high and flooded. Let's watch it in slow motion. Bill Freehand had a very tough pitch to handle. His throw is high and flood is in there, as you can see, but he had to pick that pitch right off the hitter's shoe top. First scoring opportunity of the game now. The Cardinals have flood at second. That's his third stolen base of the series. There are two down and a three and two count to Cepeda. With Mike Shannon on deck. Ball four. Rolich worked very carefully to Cepeda. Game being brought to you in living color. Exclusively on NBC, where America watches more sports than on any other network. Mike Shannon batting 280. Seven hits 25 times up. He's been up eight times against Lolich in the two games and didn't get a hit. Floods at second, Cepeda's at first. Two down. That curve is missing for him now. He's low and inside with it. It's breaking down and into the right hander. As Harry pointed out, he's had a good curve ball. One ball, no strikes. Well, it was after it. One and one. There's Flood at second. Cepeda's come on, Mike. He's at first. They're playing off the bag against him. He'll get a big lead there. One ball, one strike. There's a drive in the right center. K line's over in front of it and has it for the out. He's been all over that right field area in this series. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. At the end of the first inning, it is nothing to nothing.
The all-new Plymouth Fury for 1969. So big, so beautiful, so fresh in design, it's hard to believe this is a popular priced car. Fury has more comfort, more roominess, more luxury, and behind the wheel, more excitement. The 1969 Plymouth Valiant, built to Chrysler standards of six-passenger roominess and comfort. The Honest Compact. Fury, Valiant, Barracuda, and Belvedere at your Plymouth dealers. Well, this is our last baseball telecast of the season on NBC, but we'll be back next year with the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Every Saturday afternoon, baseball is moving into the divisional play, you know, next year. They'll have playoffs, All-Star Game at 9, the World Series, and we hope you'll be with us next season. Norman Cash. A solid World Series for him. He's batting 409. Pitches low upside. Cash has had nine hits and 22 up. Has driven in five runs. Cash has opened his stance up a little bit. He changed a couple of months ago. Fouls it off. He had one year when he hit 360, won the batting title. He said he tried to pull everything since. And this year, he's hit over 300 the last two months of the season, and he attributes it to that change in stance. Fouls it back. He's going to left center right, although he's normally a full hitter. Cash says, well, I hope we win, naturally. Because I know one thing, we haven't embarrassed ourselves. There's a high fly ball in the right center. Maris and Flood, it's Maris calling for it for the grab, one down. <laughs> Willie Horton. Five hits and 19 times up. Batting 263. He's had one home run, and that's been right here. Titanic shot into the center field bleachers. Last ball's inside on him. Nothing to nothing in the top of the second. Foul back. Gibson's throwing hard as usual. The two uh, coaching at first, Wally Moses, and over at third is Tony Cuccinella. Two factors the Tigers talk about Gibson is how hard he throws in the first inning to the ninth inning. There's his breaking pitch in. He's got that one going today. He's going to really be rough. That's the one. That's the pitch he had going in the first game. And also they talk about how he hits the corner so much. One out. Nobody on the one two pitch. Just outside to Willie Horton. Two and two. Fouls the breaking pitch back. That hung up over the plate for Horton that time. He had a murderous swing at that one. One away, base is empty. Two and two to Willie Horton. Foul again back. You know, the weather has been almost as God is a series. We had rain on Sunday, bright sunshine on Monday, rain yesterday, and a beautiful day today. And the games have gone like that. One side of one day, and the other club coming back, off and on, off and on. Two and two to Horton. Right side of the curve. Tried to hold up, couldn't do it. Bob Gibson now is two strikeouts away from tying his own record of 31 strikeouts in a World Series. 
That was a record he set in 1964 against the Yankees. Here's the Grand Slam kid, Jim Northrup. Takes it high for a ball. Northrup batting 208. He's had five hits in this series. Two of them have been home runs. He's second on the Tigers in RBIs. Gibson high, ball two. Two down, nobody on. The score, nothing, nothing. Top of the second. The 2 0 pitch. His fastball is through. Strike two and one. Jim Northrup. Fouls it back. Two and two. Two two pitch. Held up on it. Three and two. Three two pitch. Right down on the curve. Curve has been Gibson. Good pitch. That's his third strikeout. Three up and three down. At the end of an inning and a half, it's the Tigers nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, feel confident. Stay dry with new Right Guard Antiperspirant, a completely new product from Right Guard. Right Guard Antiperspirant is a new defense against perspiration. It contains a tested agent that checks perspiration wetness. Feel confident. Stay dry. Get new Right Guard Antiperspirant in the silver can. Ten more blades to go. Five blades to go. Three. Just three blades to go. That's it. I used up all the old blades. Now I can use the new Gillette Super Stainless Steel Blade with the Miracle Plastic Coating on the edge. They say it's supposed to spoil you. The Spoiler. Tony Kubek. Thank you, Kurt. You know, anytime the Cardinals need the big game, they call on Mr. Bob Gibson, Mrs. Bob Gibson, Charlene. You must be quite proud of your husband. I sure am. It's quite a responsibility on his shoulders. And on mine, this is the third time I've sat through something like this. I guess you'd like some run script, wouldn't you? I sure would. Like right now. Charlene, thank you so much. Now let's go back upstairs to Curt and Harry. Mm -hmm. Tim McCarver, Roger Maris, and Del Maxville. They'll be up for the Cardinals against Mickey Lolich in the last half of the second. McCarver, 8 out of 24, a 333 World Series average. Brooks it foul down the first base line. Dick Sussler coaching at first for the Cardinals and Joe Schultz at third. One and one to McCarver, who's had only one hit and seven times up against Lowlich. Ty Hardwin, one and two. Cardinals were getting some airline tickets and passports today. They're going to Japan to represent the major leagues after the World Series. Making the annual tour of Japan that one of the United States teams does every year. How's it back? 
Nice catch of a souvenir in back of us. One ball, two strikes. Travis started after that uh, high fastball, two and two. Lowich is pitching him high. He's usually down low on the rest of them. Two and two. Watch free and spot that catcher's mitt. A foul back again. Well, with two days rest, Lolich has thrown more pitches here in the first inning and this inning than he did in either of game two or game five. Cardinals had two men on against him in the first. Now it's a 2 2 count here to McCarver. His curve just missing. Gibson's curve has been his pitch. He's been hitting with his curveball, and Lowich is missing with his. That doesn't mean it'll stay this way. Three and two to Tim McCarver. Nobody on, nobody out. He walked it. Second walk by Lowley. Roger Maris has been platooned in this series until game seven. And they play him against the left hander today. This will be his final professional baseball game today. He's retiring after this one. He's not going with the Cardinals to Japan. And this is it. And so will it be for. Eddie Matthews of the Detroit Tigers after a long and wonderful career both in the National and American League. Eddie Matthews will retire from baseball after this game. They both have bruised up a few pitchers in their time. <laughs> yeah they've hit a few balls out of the park. The Carver on first nobody out the score nothing nothing last of the second. Roger Maris the batter. And there's Lowley's third missing again. And now they have, uh, I believe, sent the call to the Tiger bullpen. I see some stirring around out there. Maybe not. Maybe they're just shifting around. Foul back. One ball, one strike to Maris. That's McCarver on first. Nobody out. Nothing to nothing. Last of the second. He pops it up over toward the Cardinals dugout. It is right on top of the dugout. Cash disappeared inside and comes back out. Dick Sisler gives him a rib. One ball, two strikes. Stanley steps on second, throws to first, double play. Holding it first was McCarver. He thought that ball had been caught. He didn't want to get doubled up. But that skidded right in front of Stanley, who came up with it, stepped on the bag at second, and fired to first. Double play, two down, nobody on. Are you sure Stanley never played shortstop before? Well, there's two uh, former shortstops in this ballpark today. Pee Wee Reese over at Radio, Marty Marion in the stadium club. 
They have to be uh, admiring his play in this series. Including our own Tony Kubek all right, over the place. Tony all over the stadium. Two down, nobody on. Dal Maxville, the batter, still looking for his first series hit. Downing ball, downward, the cash, that's it. And the Cardinals are out. No runs, no hits, there were no errors, nobody left. At the end of two, it is nothing to nothing. Oh, I'm so nervous. What if I got Dodge fever right in the middle of cutting this two million dollar diamond? Some things just can't wait, like the Dodge Dodge Swinger 340. Young, new, compact with a wild new personality. The size, style, and looks say it all. Please. I don't want to make a boo-boo. With bumblebee stripes, dual exhaust, four on the floor, and a new high-performance hood. What gives the swinger its swing? 340 cubes of V8. Easy. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the commissioner's office solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner's office is prohibited. Bob Gibson will pitch to the bottom third of the Tiger order in the third, freehand work at Lowy. Bill Freehand has had one hit in 20 times. Curve is outside. Harry, he went in for his first lick in batting practice today and broke his favorite bat. He says, what a World Series I'm having. <laughs> Got a good sense of humor. He hit himself a little bit. Maybe that's what he needed was a new bat. Looks like Gibson slider that time for a strike. One and one. Kurt, I've never seen Gibson throw so many breaking balls as he is in this game. One, one pitch. Fastball lined in the center at Kurt Flood, one away. Well, Bob Gibson now has retired the first seven batters he's faced. Don Worth, one hit in 14. They play Worth to swing late, to hit to the opposite field in center and right and leave left center open for him. That's a strike. There you can see Flood over in right center. Now notice that big gap in left center with Lou Brock playing in straight away in left. Overpowers him with a fastball strike two. Uh, Bob Gibson has the reputation if you don't get him early, forget it. He gets stronger as the game goes along. Two strike pitch. And Gibson has tied his own all time World Series record. That's his 31st strikeout in this series. He struck out 31 in three games against the Yankees in 1964. This is his fourth strikeout today. And he's been really consistent in strikeouts. This is his 21st inning, and he's and had at least one strike out of 19 of those 21 in. Strike the lowest. Mickey's been quite a hitter. He's had three hits eight times up in the series. And he had a home run here. Quick two. Two strikeouts now is a new record, and he'll probably pile that one on. Three up and three down at the end of two and a half. Tigers nothing, Cardinals nothing. Once you get off the beaten track, weekend driving can be fun. Though sometimes the unexpected can happen, especially when your wife is with you. Mm hmm. The chair that looked just like it matched Granny's set didn't, of course. 
But it's astonishing the number of things she's always wanted she's never mentioned till now. That's when it's nice to have cash on hand at the Commerce. Cash for spending, cash for saving. The Commerce checking account plus savings account gives you the best of both worlds. Let's a man be his own master. Yes, sir. Weekend drivers sometimes get an unexpected bonus, especially when they keep cash on hand. Keep cash on hand at the Commerce. All right, Tony. We've got Mr. Roger Maris. Pat, you must be a little saddened today knowing Roger's playing his last ball game. Yes, I certainly am, but I'm sure we'll just end up winners, and the good Lord upstairs is watching over. Pat, good luck to you. Good luck to Roger. Let's go back upstairs to Curtin Harry. Thank you. Bob Gibson had a standing ovation, especially when it was flashed on the scoreboard about his World Series record. He's now broken two World Series records in strikeouts. 17 in one game, and the most strikeouts ever in the series, breaking his own. Ball two to Gibson. Lowlich has walked two. Lou Brock's on deck at the top of the order, and then Javier. Lowlich fires a fastball through for a strike. Two and one. Gibson dangerous with the bat for a pitcher. Fouls it off, two and two. He's the only pitcher to ever hit two World Series home runs. He's had two. There's a chopper being charged by third baseman Wirt, who throws him out easily, and there's one down. Well, it's jammed him on the fist with a fastball. Wirt hasn't hit much, but he's played a steady third base. Lou Brock grounded out his first time. Brock batting 462. has the highest lifetime batting average of any player who's played and this is for World Series competition. Of any man who's ever played in the series. There's a good curve in the corner for a strike. Nothing to nothing. The cards have one out nobody on last to the third. Found the ball again to the right side. McCollum throws him out. And that ball took a funny skid. We've had several bad hops in the series, and they've all been headed toward the second baseman. Now they say keep Brock off the bases. Lolich has done it twice. I was thinking the same thing. Until today, every time you look up, he's been on somewhere. Javier flied out his first time. Mickey Lolich, owner of five motorcycles. Has that sinker ball going for him. Easy tapper to third, and Lolich and Gibson are matched up here now. So far, this looks like a rouser of a pitching duel. Three up and three down. At the end of three, it is nothing to nothing. Meet the beautiful 1969 GTX, one of the exciting Plymouth Belvedere line that includes Roadrunner and Sports Satellite. GTX is all sport, all luxury and comfort. From any angle, GTX is a great looking performance car at a down to earth price.
The sporty Plymouth Barracuda has a look and a personality all its own. A personality you can mold to match your own with a list of options as long as your arm. Fury, Valiant, Barracuda, and Belvedere at your Plymouth dealers. This is Kurt Gowdy with Harry Carey, Tony Kubek from St. Louis. I'll straighten that out next time, Tony. Dick McCollum fouled out his first time, batting 250. We're at the top of the Tiger batting order now. Collis, Stanley, and K-Line. Gibson. There's a high drive to right field with Maris backing up just a bit. One away. So the first 10 minutes for the Tigers have gone down. Here's a fellow who's hit the hardest shot out Gibson so far. A line drive to the box that Gibson stabbed in the first inning. Five strikeouts, no walks so far. Right. Lolich looked a little wobbly in the first inning, but he's breezed the last two innings. No balls, one strike to Mickey Stanley. Now back, the count quickly goes nothing in two. I think our friend Pee Wee Reese just made his first error of the season in the radio booth. <laughs> a two strike pitch. High. One and two. Gibson is bearing down now on another record. Most strikeouts lifetime in a World Series. Ground ball in the hole. Maxfield has a long throw, and as he couldn't straighten up and let it go, he caught his spikes. That is a single, an infield hit for Mickey Stanley. Looks like he's hurt his right foot or his leg. Well, there's the first base runner for the Tigers. That would have been a tough play for Maxwell anyway, because Stanley can run. Maxwell had a long throw from deep in the hole. Fastball outside the K-line. Each team has had one hit. K-line struck out his first time. Nothing and nothing in the top of the fourth. Cutting away at a fastball, one and one. Could you mention what a good fielder Gibson uh, is? That would have been a tough play for Maxwell anyway, because Stanley can run. Maxwell had a long throw from deep in the hole. Fastball outside the K-line. Each team has had one hit. K-line struck out his first time. Nothing and nothing in the top of the fourth. Fastball, one and one. Could you mention what a good fielder Gibson uh, is? What makes him remarkable is the way he throws himself off the mound, how he can react to catch balls hit back that way. One ball, one strike. Low. Ball two, two and one. The way he falls toward first, you think you could bunt on him, wouldn't you? Two and one to K-Line. Stanley on first, one out. Foul. Two and two. Here in slow motion, we'll get an idea of how he falls off that mound. Now watch his body. About two feet over. Great shot. Two and two to K-Line. 
Stanley at first, one out, no score. Fourth inning. K-line reaching for a high fastball. Pops it foul. This one is out of play. Whitey Ford has 94 strikeouts in his lifetime in the World Series. Gibson now has 89. Two and two. Strike three to Carolina. I am looking at a fastball. Six strikeouts in this game for Gibson. And of course, every strikeout he records now, he will put the frosting on the strikeout record for one World Series. Already holds the one game record, a one World Series record, and he's bearing down on the all time World Series record. Norman Cash flying to right field his first time. There are two down. Stanley's on first. Cash slams it. Foul. Oh, he tagged that one. Got around on him a bit too much. Boy, that's a third tier up there, Kurt. What is that, Joe Garagiola? Right. A little more reach there, Joe. Ted McCauley, I believe, has got it. Ted McCauley. Well, he had a pretty good stretch up there in those rebounds in basketball. Cash ripping away at a fastball, nothing in two. Tigers in the fourth have two down. Stanley at first, no score. Gibson's throwing more fastballs now, Harry. He frequently does that. Goes along with a pitch that's particularly effective for him and then changes to other pitches. Pitch out. I think what happened, Kurt, the first few fastballs he tried, they weren't exactly the Gibson fastball, so he went to his breaking ball, his curve and slider. Now apparently his fastball, he's found his fastball again. One ball, two strikes to Norm Cash. The curve is a little bit outside. Two and two. Willie Horton on deck for the Tigers. If Cash does something, he'll be up next. Two-two pitch on the way. Round ball to the left side. Shannon's up with it. His throw to first is in time by two strikes. And the Tigers are retired in the fourth. They had no run. One hit, no errors, one left. At the end of three and a half, Tigers nothing, Cardinals nothing. If you've been looking for a lime shaving cream that's not too sweet, Gillette Foamy has what you've been looking for. Because Gillette Foamy has this. The lemon lime. It's part lemon, part lime. The essence of the lemon keeps the tang in the lime. And that keeps this shaving cream from smelling too sweet. Gillette Foamy with lemon lime. Wait till your face gets a taste of it. Mm. Take razor in right hand. Right hand. Now press button A. You'd think to change your old Techmatic razor into our new adjustable Techmatic might be a big deal. But all you do is take out your old cartridge and put in our new one. It not only has all the advantages of the old Techmatic, but it now adjusts for a closer shave. You also get one other little satisfaction. You did it all yourself. Kurt Flood is ready to go now. Flood, Cepeda, and Shannon. One thing you could have bet on in the series is the attendance here every day. 54,692 just been announced. Ball one. That's been the attendance announced every day. That's everything they can sell, including standing room. Mickey Lolich. Pitching to Kurt Flood. The count one to nothing. High ball two. 
Plus single to right his first time. He has the only hit off Lowly. Drive down the right field line. It is a foul ball. A game of inches, isn't it? Kurt Flood, the most consistent hitter for the Cardinals all year. He started out hitting over 300 and right up around that 300 mark week after week. Nobody on, nobody out. A 2 1 pitch to him. Line drive to Stanley on one half, picks it up, throws. He's got a neat recovery by Stanley, who didn't give up on that ball. A skidding one hopper. That's why this ball was really hit hard by Flood. Stanley, in knocking the ball down, is able to keep it in front of him. That's what makes it possible for him to throw Flood out. He has that sidearm throw, Harry, but he put something on it. I'm just going to say, he gets a lot on his throw. He threw out a fast man flood. Zapata drives it foul down the right field line into the seats. One out. Nobody on. Nothing, nothing. Last of the fourth inning. Lolich perhaps has not been as spectacular as Gibson with all the Gibson strikeouts so far, but Lolich is getting his job done, too. Bounding ball. Nice stop by Word if he can come up with it. His throw. He's got him. That was a tough play. Off to the left. Uh, second hot was coming up sharply to him. And he hung with it and threw him out. Well, the uh, two Cardinals, Flood and Zapata, hit the ball sharply to the infield, but fine fielding behind Lowley helped him. Lolich's sinker is working because the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the last seven batters have hit balls to the infield. Which means they're popping the ball. And it's a strike. The ball that live uh, fastball is dipping down. Two down, nobody on. Mike Shannon. Fouls are back. It's nothing and two to Shannon. Now Shannon has a farm, Harry, not too far from here. And you know what he's rearing, raising? Quail and wild turkey so he could hunt. <laughs> Expensive hobby. A 0-2 pitch. Struck him out on a high fastball. And Mickey Lolich continues to match Bob Gibson. In goose eggs here, three up and three down at the end of four. Nothing to nothing. They paid me to bring it in. I handle my cranes with finesse. As long as I don't get that fever, no sweat. Right? Right. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? 1969 Dodge Charger SE. Charger excitement in a stunning new special edition. Packed with extras that aren't extra on this one. So far, so good. In here, a world of vinyls and leathers and wood grain luxury. A new front grille just for looks, and an optional 440 Magnum V8 just for kids. Charger's special edition for 1969. It's why Dodge Fever is more smashing than ever. Dodge is turning up the fever now. All right, Tony, who do you have now? Kurt, one of the top people in the basketball world, Mr. Ben Kerner, former owner of the St. Louis Hawks, but also a great baseball fan. Ben, we're having a heck of a series. It sure is, and there is nothing that can compare to a drama of a World Series game. It's just amazing. Especially Lolich versus Gibson. Well, I've watched Gibson about a dozen times this year. He has to be the greatest pitcher in baseball. Mr. Kerner, thank you so much. Let's go back upstairs. 
Willie Horton starts it off for the Tigers in the fifth. He struck out his first time. And that first pitch to him was high and inside for a ball. Horton, Northrop, and freehand for the Tigers. Two and nothing. When Horton's up there, the Tiger outfield, the Cardinal outfield, plays its deepest against any uh, other Tiger hitter. Look at him, way out there and around toward left. Now they're just waving Kurt Flood a bit towards straightaway center. Curve is inside, ball three. Gibson has not walked a man so far. And he struck out six. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Horton given the green light on this three nothing pitch. Right in there, three and one. Three one pitch to Willie Horton. Back to. High pop up to the right side. Javier lost his cap, but has the baseball. One out. Jim Northrup struck out his first time. Wayne Northrup is a full hitter to right field. Nothing to nothing in the fifth inning. Ball. Each team's had only one hit. The only base runner for the Tigers has been Stanley, who had an infield hit in the fourth. With two out in the first, Flood single, stole second, Cepeda walked. But Shannon flied out to end that inning. The Carver walked in the second, and since then, Lolich has retired eight in a row. One nothing pitch. There's a pop foul down the left field line. Everybody racing for it. And Shannon going away has it. Boy, what plays we're getting in this game. Now, this is the way to cap off the series with a brilliantly played game like this, Harry. Whenever you find outstanding pitching, here's the slow motion on Shannon's excellent play in foul territory. But he's back to the infield. He makes the catch. Kurt, when the pitchers are as sharp as Lolich and Gibson are, you see more good defensive plays because the ball players are on their toes and they're ready to move with every pitch. When the pitcher's dilly dallying around and is uh, behind, uh, the infielders can't be alert. There are two down now. Nobody on and Bill Freehand up. Fouls are back. Freehand lined to center field his first time. No runs, one hit for the Tigers. No runs. One hit for the Cardinals. There's a drive hit to deep left field. Brock on the path. Right on the edge of it for the out. Three ends hit the ball hard twice. But to an outfield. Three up, three down. We've gone halfway. And there is no score. This was Canada, 1867. The Bank of Commerce began that year. Canada grew, and Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce kept pace. A reliable, progressive bank. Its thoughts are still on the future. Already, space-age computers serve some branches to give customers fast, electronic service. Eventually, they will link all commerce branches coast to coast. for the near future. Commerce cash dispensers. Conveniently located so that you can get instant cash day or night. Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce. One of the world's great banks. You know, Joe DiMaggio will make a 17-day tour of military hospitals in the Pacific, along with three active players at the close of the season. The trip was arranged by the Commissioner of Baseball, William D. Eckert, 
in cooperation with the Department of Defense and the USO. Outfielder Rick Mundy of the Oakland A's and pitchers Ron Klein of the Pirates and Ron Taylor of the Mets will accompany DiMaggio and Arthur Richmond of the Mets to the Pacific. And now for the last part of the game, fellow who for 24 years has sold baseball and the Cardinals and thrilled the fans in his vast network around here and who done another outstanding job on the World Series. Proud to turn it over to Harry Carey. Harry? Thank you very much, Kurt. Hello again, everybody. Bottom of the fifth inning, decisive game of the World Series. No score. Gibson against Lolich. Each team has had a hit. McCarver leads off the bottom of the fifth. He walked his first time at bat. 26 years old, the player rep of the Cardinals from Memphis, Tennessee. Had an off season during the regular year, hitting only 253. High and inside. Lolich has now shut the Cardinals out 12 innings in a row. Gibson has blanked the Tigers the last 10 innings he's faced them. We're having the pitching duel that previous performances would indicate we would have today. Chase the curveball. And Lolich has a good one. And he drops down sidearm to the left-hand hitters with it. One ball, one strike. There's Red Shandies. <laughs> Hit hard. Pass Stanley in the left field. That ball took a skipping hop. Didn't come up for him. And it'll be a base hit for McCarver. That's Tim's ninth hit of the series. And here's Roger Maris, and the Cardinal crowd now has become alive. Maris playing his final game after a long and outstanding career. Thirty-four years old. This is forty-first World Series game. Holds the ball foul. Rogers, the one of the hitting stars of last year's World Series, but the Tigers have held him well in check. He's had only three out of seventeen against them. Stockily built, good power. This is seventh World Series. He had a good cut but missed. A high fastball. And Lulich is matching Gibson. Pitch for pitch and inning by inning. The Cardinals have two hits off Lulich. Tigers have one off Gibson. Carver Lee. Her ball inside. Five of his World Series for Maris were with the Yankees. He's been with the Cardinals two years. He's played in two class classic. McCarver can run for a catcher. Stuck him out. For Lowlich, a second strikeout. And he shows no signs of deteriorating it off. There's the only hitless man in the series among the regulars. He's nothing out of 21. Dial Maxville. He's 29 years old. From Granite City, Illinois. Graduated from Washington University here in St. Louis. With a degree in electrical engineering. Curve is high and outside. No score, fifth inning. There goes McCarver, swung, popped up. McCarver will have to return in a hurry. Cash in foul territory, makes the catch, throws late. 
to McCall of covering first base. They were decoying McCarver, who was running with the pitch. The hit and run was on. Decoying him into thinking the ball had been hit on the ground. Listen to the ovation now for Gibson. There was a runner going. Now he starts back. They had yelled to Cash to get rid of it as quickly as he could. He nearly throws it away here, by the way. McCall up the second baseman covering has to reach out. Gibson has hit a home run in this World Series. He hit one in last year's World Series. High pop fly that McAuliffe calls for. That retires the side with no runs, one hit. No errors, one left. And at the end of five full innings, it's still Detroit nothing. Announcing your next car, the great new Chrysler. Outside it, the surface of the road and the shifting, ever-changing elements. Heat. Wind. Water and noise. The uncontrolled elements. Inside your next car, a controlled environment. A quiet cockpit where miniature memory systems monitor and complement your every driving habit. Your next car the controlled environment is here. In your next car, the great new Chrysler. We pause now for station identification. Well, I'm not a young boy, uh, Tony. I'm Don Davidson of the Atlanta Braves. Why are, oh, you're not in school anymore. No, I got out 25 years ago, Tony, as you know. Don Davidson, nice seeing you. Good luck to you and the Braves next year. Thank you very much, Tony. Let's go back upstairs right now. <laughs> Our good friend Donald Davidson. Sixth inning. Downward first pitch. Fly ball. Center field should be easy. That'll bring up Mickey Lolich, who hit a home run here in the second game of the series. You know, as you reflect on this series so far, the performance of Lolich becomes even more outstanding. He has kept his team in the series to a point where they could win it all right here today. Not even to mention, there's a smash. Javier on one hop will throw him out. Ball is hit hard. To think what the audience would have been deprived, Kurt, if Mickey Stanley had not been able to play shortstop, to think that an Al K line would not have been in this World Series is almost a tragedy. That's right. And one thing the Cardinals talk about Lolich is after he gave up the three runs in the first inning of game five, the way he battled back and held on. They said that's what showed them what a good pitcher he was. Dick McAuliffe, the second baseman, takes a curve in there, a strike ball. McAuliffe fouled out and flied out. He's had six out of 25 in the series. At 249 during the season with 16 homers. Evens it up, a ball and a strike. Gibson's pitching like he has a plane to catch. <laughs> he always pitches this way. He averages about a two hour ball game. A 1 1 pitch, and it's high. Two balls and a strike. They play McAuliffe to pull, and he pulls one off his leg foul. Rhodes in fair territory, and he had an idea of the agility of one Bob Gibson on that. He's like a cat off that mound. Well, he was a great all-round athlete, good enough at basketball, 
not only star for Creighton University, but to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. Two two pitch. No score in the sixth. There's a fly ball deep, but it'll be caught. Flood waits. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of five and a half innings, it's still Detroit nothing, St. Louis nothing. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, feel confident. Stay dry with new Right Guard Antiperspirant, a completely new product from Right Guard. Right Guard Antiperspirant is a new defense against perspiration. It contains a tested agent that checks perspiration wetness. Feel confident. Stay dry. Get new Right Guard Antiperspirant in the silver can. Stay schedule. The AFL Championship. The Sugar Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Senior Bowl, the Super Bowl, and the AFL All-Star Game. All in color exclusively on NBC. Lou Brock leading it off. Nothing out of two in this game. Twice has bounced to the second baseman, McCullough. He was going to bunt. One ball, no strike. Lolich has been going directly sidearm to Brock. Feeding him a lot of sidearm curve. Worth playing very shallow at third base to guard against the bunt. Again, he's wide with a slider. Two balls, no strikes. Lil Brock leading off, no score. You have the feeling that a run will do it. Which team will get that run? Base hit. Lou Brock's 13th hit of the series. Two balls, no strikes. Lou Brock leading off, no score. You have the feeling that a run will do it. Which team will get that run? Base hit. That ties Bobby Richardson's record for most hits in the World Series. Now Javier comes up. Nobody out. That's the second inning in a row that the leadoff man has had a base hit. McCarver let off the fifth, but nothing happened. Brock is on. Will he attempt to steal? Harry Kyle and Luke Pessardo will keep a closer eye on him than even anybody here on the diamond camp. Pitch out. He may have almost been crossed up. Rock, very intent. Boy, look at him. Watch his eyes. He stole two bases against Lolich and uh, Freehan and the Tigers there in game two. Look at that lead he had. Certainly they're going to throw over. And there he goes the other way. Out! That's the play that worked here earlier in the series, but not this time. He just dared him to make that throw to first. Cash fired down to Stanley, and they have the tag on him. He just dared him. Look at that lead. Different angle. See that big lead? He dared him to make the throw to first. And as the ball hit it at first, he was going to break the second and grab it. The cash has a perfect strike down to Stanley to get him. A big play for the Tigers now to rub Brock out. Now Javier batting with nobody on base and one out. Bill Freehand and now talking to Mickey Lulich. No score. 
a tense battle here in the decisive game. Lulich against Gibson. Javier held up in time, ball two. Two balls, no strike. You know, being associated with just one ball club, we don't see NBC's great sports crew too often. And when we, here's the pitch, and it's a strike off. So when, I, when we have an opportunity, it's certainly one fellows like Jim O'Gorman and Alan Roth and Roy Hammerman and Harry Carl and, of course, Luke Cussero, Chet Simmons, to know that we've enjoyed their hospitality. Two balls and a strike. Line smash to Stanley. Boy, he's been, he's been a, sucking him up down there at Georgetown. It's about four or five wicked shots hit at him. And now Flood comes up. He singled in the first and stole the base. Two men are gone. Bottom of the sixth. Lolich has been in a little more trouble. The ball's been hit harder against him. That's not what they pay off on. He's kept a run from scoring. And that's what he's out there for. One ball, one strike. Gibson has been brilliant. He's allowed only one hit. And they're all tied up. Nothing, nothing. The curve inside. You know, he has a good assortment of pitches. He can come over the top and he can cross fire or sidearm left handed hitters. He's got a good fastball. It seems like two kinds of curveball. Ground ball, tough play for Stanley, long throw. Safe. Cash did an Adagio split. Trying to get that ball as soon as possible. But Flood legged it out, and now here's Cepeda. Cepeda homered off Lolich in Detroit. Orlando is 7 out of 26 for a 269 average. Flood has base stealing speed. He has stolen three bases in this series himself. Slider barely missed. They like to pitch Cepeda in tight, like to jam him with the ball. You make just a little mistake and don't get it in far enough, it can hurt you. Took corner that time. Harry, this fellow's done a remarkable job with two days rest. He certainly has. One ball, one strike. They got him picked off. Flood is cut off first base. There's McAuliffe now, and Lowry's running him down the other way. Everybody's handled the ball, and he is tagged out finally by Mickey Stanley. One, three, four, one, six of your scoring. You want to follow the slow action? All right, here it is on the read, uh, rerun. That's a uh, Lowich now the pitcher. 
Here's Stanley faking a throw and then making the tag to wind up the play. So the Cardinals had two men cut down on a rundown that time between first and second. So it was two hits, no runs, no errors, nobody left. And at the end of six full innings now, still nothing, nothing. Dodge Fever saved the day. He lost his head over Dodge Coronet. Dodge Coronet. Design 69. Proving it costs less than you'd think to go first class on a 117-inch wheelbase. Coronet. Trim enough outside to handle quickly, easily. Big enough inside to handle a crowd in comfort. 17 Coronets to choose from, including the Coronet Super B with 383 cubes of standard V8. A wild new way to get Dodge Fever. Dodge is turning up the fever now. Get your cure for a new Dodge Fever now. Dodge Fever at your Dodge dealer. Mickey Stanley with a count of strike one. Takes a fastball low. Cardinals ran themselves out of the sixth inning as both Brock and Flood were trapped. And now it's the seventh. High pop foul. Out of play. Two strikes on the ball. What a dramatic finish to this World Series. The two best pitchers in the series hooked against each other, each going in with records of 2 and 0, and battling each other into the seventh nothing nothing. Half swing, foul ball. Boy, that just missed inches being an extra base hit as Stanley had tried to check his swing. Well, just cleared Cepeda's head and foul by not more than a foot or so, if that much. Two strikes and a ball on Mickey Stanley. One out of two in this game. Strike three call. The seventh strikeout for Gibson. He's approaching Whitey Ford's record for World Series strikeout. Mayo Smith of the Tigers, Red Shane East of the Cardinals. The leaders of the two clubs. Here's Kaline. Bouncing ball, Shannon. Dissipated, two away. And Gibson refuses to give in to the pressure put on him so heavily by the fine performance of Mickey Lulich. Here's Norm Cash, who's had a fine series with nine out of 24, hitting 375. A real home run threat. That was a slider that was high. Cash hit 25 during the season. He's hit one in the series. Ooh, he had a cut. Even up, a ball and a strike. How much bothers him? Well, here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Rolling outside. You know, if I were Phil Wrigley, the owner of the Cubs, I'd make a trade for cash because what an advertisement he is. Got a lot of chewing gum, gum in his mouth all day long. Oh, a dandy. Boy, that snapped in there. Two balls, two strikes. 
Another curveball, but low. Bob Gibson. Hasn't walked anybody today. He has fanned seven. He's allowed one hit and infield hit. Line smash base hit. And here's Willie Hart. is the type of hitter you don't dare make a mistake on. And even if you don't make a mistake, he's strong enough to hit anything out of the ballpark. Base hit. And the Tigers now made their first threat with two out base hits by Cash and Horton. Brings up the... Grand Slam kid, Jim Northrup. He's had two homers and six runs batted in in the series. He had 21 homers and led his team in runs batted in during the season with 90. He's had one out of nine against the pitching of Gibson, and that was a home run. That was the only run that Gibson's permitted in this series. McCarver and Gibson are not discussing the weather, which is beautiful. Northrop hits the ball to all fields. Fly ball, flood. Very almost flood. He misjudges it over his head. Two runs are going to score. The same thing almost happened earlier in the game to Jim Northrup, and now it has happened to one of the greatest defensive center fielders in baseball, Kurt Flood. As he started over, something happened to his underfooting. Watch this now. He catches his spike, see? And he nearly fell down. And that cost him gauging the ball. Flood very rarely has ever uh, misjudged the ball out there, but when he stumbled on his way, it threw him out of his path. He couldn't get back. The ball sailed over his head. And the Tigers now have two runs in in the seventh. And this all came after two out. Nobody on. Tug to Trite leads. Two to nothing. Bill Freehand, the batter. He's nothing out of two. Northrop. He now has driven in eight runs. The curve is a beauty over the inside corner. Each team now has four hits. Two balls and a strike. After two are out, singles by Cash and Hart. Brought up Northrop. Hit the ball hard, but directly in the center field. Flood slipped as he started for the ball. Long and missed, and it's evened up. Two balls, two strikes. Long drive, left center field, block on the run. Can't make the play, a base hit. Another run is in. Tigers lead three to nothing. A double for three half. And that Detroit dugout now is a happy place. Three to nothing, Detroit in the seventh inning. The Tigers trying to become only the third team in World Series history to be down three games to one and still win the series. Works being intentionally passed. That will bring up Lolich. Yeah. 
Mickey Lulich, who has shut the Cardinals out for six innings. Harry, how often have you seen four hits in a row against Gibson? Not often. Lulich fanned in the third, bounced out in the sixth. Struck him out. Oh, the Tigers finally break the ice here by scoring three runs on four hits. No errors, two men were left. You go to the bottom of the seventh, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. Jeremy I. Parsons got a red convertible loan from the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce and bought a blue fast bag with buckets. You look great in blue, Jerry. On the other hand, Wilfred S. Hughes got a Commerce Red Convertible loan and brought a beige sedan. If you pick me up at the hairdressers, you could... Wilfred, watch out for that truck. Wilfred, it says no left turn. Take me down to Mary Jane's. Yeah? Well, sure beats walking, eh, Willie? Meanwhile, Miss Charis D. Holmes got a Commerce Red Convertible loan and bought a pickup truck. How do you like them apples, eh, Charis? Wouldn't you like a Commerce Red Convertible loan? You might even get a Red Convertible. Whatever you want, from cars to cameras, boats to Broadloom, get it. With a bank plan loan from the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, you'll find it easy to arrange. Just talk to the man at the Commerce. Sunday AFL games on NBC. Houston at Boston, Denver at New York in the first game. Second game with a big one, San Diego at Oakland, and Cincinnati at Kansas City. Right now in the final game of the World Series, the Tigers have broken through three to nothing. Mickey Lulich, pitching with two days rest now, has the lead. Let's see if he can hold it. Harry Cole. Orlando Cepeda, who walked his first time and bounced out his other time, is at the plate. St. Louis trails three to nothing. There's no tomorrow. This is it. Foul out of play. Lulich looks as if he should pitch out with two days rest all the time. He has been great. Chased a high fastball. The Cardinals were ahead in this World Series Monday, three games to one, and got three runs in the first inning. The Tigers came off the floor to win that game, won yesterday, and are in front today. Two strikes and the ball. Rushed him back, and it's even. Two balls, two strikes. Three to nothing, Detroit. Bottom of the seventh. The 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. One away, and here's Mike Shannon. He's throwing harder now than he did early in the game. He's really fiery. He's sneaky fast anyway. He's sharper, too. Early in the early innings, a little wild. Behind on hitters, walked two men. But since the second inning, he has been absolutely perfect. Here's Shannon.
One strike and no balls as he grounds one foul. Joe Schultz coaching at third base. Side step that one. Three to nothing. Tigers lead. Bottom of the seventh in St. Louis. Matt Evans said he faked the bunt. Outfield straight away. The curve was high. Two balls and a strike. One out. K line now plays Shannon well over towards center. Curve is a dandy. And evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. Three to nothing, Tigers in front. Scored three runs. Everybody enjoys baseball. All three. Mike Shannon, Cardinals need base runners if they're to do anything. With Lolich, who has a three run lead. Easy fly ball. Hey, and Northrop drops it. Shannon going to second. Horton and Northrop almost collided, and the ball dropped off Northrop's glove. Here it is now. Looks like an easy chance. Here's Willie Horton. Looks like he's getting to the ball first. Now Northrop comes in. There they are, both reaching up. Northrop. That ball might have just been jarred. You saw Horton try and fade back and get out of his way. No matter how many times you tell ball players to talk, to yell, I've got it, that will happen. It happened on a foul ball in Detroit between freehand and cap. It's ruled an error on Northrop. Shannon is at second base with one out. McCarver, who has walked and singled in this game, He's had two out of eight against Lowlich in the series. High fly. K line will catch it. Shannon holds. Hey, he's almost tagged at second base on a fine play by Stanley. The shortstop cut it off, and K line purposely shaded that throw toward the bag. When he saw Shannon holding a second. That would have been something. Here's Maris now. He's nothing out of two. Put into a double play and struck out. Dick Schofield going down to the right field corner. Apparently, there'll be a pinch hitter from Maxville if it goes that far in this inning. Swings, and he misses a curve. There's Schofield going into the bullpen area to limber up. Lowlich has stopped the Cardinals cold. Two out here in the seventh. Shannon at second base. Popped it up. Shortstop Stanley is there. And it's no runs, no hits, one air, one left. At the end of seven full innings, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. Just look what Plymouth's up to now. Just look what Plymouth's up to now. Driving will never be the same again for you. Introducing the 1969 Plymouths. 
Fury. This year it's a whole new car. Longer, wider, completely redesigned from rubber to roof line. Belvedere, our mid-sized success car. 26 models, 18 colors, 76 interiors. Valiant, the compact that didn't get bigger, just better. Barracuda, four great engines, three great bodies, and a torsion bar suspension for true sports car handling. See what Plymouth's up to now at your Plymouth dealers. Just look what Plymouth's up to now. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. With Kurt Gowdy and Tony Kubek, this is Harry Carey at Bush Memorial Stadium. We're in the top of the eighth of the final game. Dick McAuliffe takes a pitch high. Tigers out in front three to nothing. Bouncing ball, Javier will throw him out. Here is Stanley who has been absolutely remarkable playing shortstop. And the bold move by manager Mayo Smith at the inception of this series has certainly paid off. Max Mills, the shortstop. Two men are gone. He made another bold move in game five in the seventh inning with one out, nobody on, the Tigers trailing. When he let Stanley, uh, when, uh, he let Lowly kick for himself. That was a turning point in that game, too. Here's Al Kaline, hitless so far today, nothing out of three. 11 out of 28 for the series. There's a line drive to Javier. He's got it. One, two, three, nothing across. We go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's still Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. This is the new Gillette Tecmatic Razor. If you think it looks like the old Gillette Tecmatic Razor, you're right. The only difference is this little gadget on the cartridge. Now it's set for light beards like mine. But turn it. He made another bold move in game five in the seventh inning with one out, nobody on, the Tigers trailing. When he let Stanley, uh, went, uh, he let Lowly kick for himself. That was a turning point in that game, too. Here's our K-line. Hitless so far today, nothing out of three. 11 out of 28 for the series. There's a line drive to Javier. He's got it. One, two, three, nothing across. We go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's still Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. This is the new Gillette Tecmatic Razor. If you think it looks like the old Gillette Tecmatic Razor, you're right. The only difference is this little gadget on the cartridge. Now it's set for light beards like mine. But turn it and you get a slightly closer shave for slightly heavier beards like mine. Turn it again and you get an average shave for average beards. The same shave you got from the old Techmatic. Now turn it again and I can get a good close shave. Another turn. And even with a stubble like mine, you'll get as close a shave as you can get from any other razor. Plus all the things you can't get from any other razor. The lever to change edges, the razor band for less nicks, the light feel, the new adjustable. Gillette. Techmatic. The almost perfect razor made perfect. Phil Gagliano will be the pinch hitter here for Dow Maxville. Area surprising the Tigers have been pulling a defensive change when they've had the lead in the late innings. 
moving Stanley back to center field, putting Euler in and moving Northrop to left. But they're staying right now with their starting lineup for the three run lead. Cagliano takes the curveball inside. Gagliano, nothing out of two in the series. Bouncing ball to work. Rose perfectly. One away. And the defending champions of baseball are running out of time here. Here's Bob Gibson who will bat for himself. We're going to have that play discussed. It'll become a famous play in World Series history. Northrop fly ball that Flood stumbled on nearly fell down and sailed over his head with two outs. That's the play of the series. Here's Bob Gibson. Wells the pitch back. And I imagine that sixth inning of the Cardinals will be talked about quite a bit too, Kurt. When Lowlich picked two men off first base. One foul. He's behind two strikes and nothing. Gibson bounced to third and popped up in this game. He trails by three. Bottom of the eighth. Mickey Lolich. Trying for his third victory of the series. Foul to back. Two strikes, no ball. We've been talking about Gibson and Brock and Kaline as the star of the series. Suddenly it's L O L I C H <laughs> right in there now. I should say so. Held up in time. Two strikes and a ball. Bill Freehand thought he had gone around. Tom Gorman says no, Bill. Nobody on base, one away. The ball picked the bat for a foul tip strike. Mayo Smith, manager of the Tigers. Bob Gibson with a count of two strikes and a ball. Struck him out, swinging. The fourth strikeout for Lolich. The Cardinals got three runs in the first inning off Lolich Monday afternoon in Detroit, and since then he has shut them out. The next eight innings Monday, for the first seven and two thirds innings here today. Here's Lou Brock, who's hit safely in nine World Series games in a row. Curveball low and outside. Lowlich coming from the side to the left hand batter. Low and outside, ball two. I know people are watching his game intently everywhere, Kurt. Can't you just visualize him? in Detroit and in that area. Well, they waited 23 years to get back in the World Series. Now there are three runs up here in the eighth inning. All three is low. Lil Brock bounced out to McCollum his first two times and singled the left. Drew a throw to first as he 
headed for second and was cut down. Watch him, ball four. And here comes manager Mayo Smith of Detroit strolling towards the mound as Bill Freehand has preceded, preceded him there along with second baseman Dick McCullough. I'm sure all he wants to know is, are you tired? Tell me honestly now, is that arm getting a little bit tired? If he's tired, we'll get a fresh man in here. That's his first walk since the second inning. He walked a man in the first, a man in the second. Of course, one of the tips usually on a fellow losing his stuff or tiring is when he starts to lose a little control. But uh, he has got the first two men out in this inning. Up rocks on first. Three nothing Tigers. And let's see what happens. William Javier is hitless today. Nothing out of three has hit the ball sharply each time, but out. Two men are gone. The runner at first base, Lubra. Lolich's pitch. He bounced. Worth feeling and throwing. Good plays out. Quick play by Worth. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of eight full innings, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. A truck is a truck. Right. Wrong. 69 Dodge and Fargo trucks are sport trucks. Here, take a look. New cushion beam suspension. Chrysler took the elastic off the bankroll to completely re-engineer the suspension and steering on Dodge and Fargo pickup trucks. A sway bar was added, springs redesigned, liners added, and a lot more to make 69 Dodge and Fargo trucks the sweetest handling pickups on the road under any load bar none. Bumps flatten, potholes smooth out, rides like a limousine. And that's not all. Handsome new long line styling and comfortable luxury interiors prove you don't have to be ugly to be tough. Dodge and Fargo with cushion beam suspension. Sport track 69. See your Chrysler dealer for Sport Track 69. Rick Schofield has taken over at shortstop for Dow Maxville, for whom the Cardinals pinch hit in the eighth. Norm Cash, who started the three-run rally with two out in the seventh, will be the batter. There you know he played a tremendous game in the field today as Don Ward is third. He's had some tough chances. First pitch by Gibson is swung on a long, high fly ball that will be caught by Maris in right field. One out here in the top of the ninth. Our statistician has been Alan Roth. Our production manager, Jim O'Gorman. Our videograph operator has been Bill Rose, assisted by Arnie Reith. Our special videotape segments. Here's a pitch lined in the left by Horton for a base hit. Our special videotape segments prepared by Barry Stoddard. So Willie Horton gets his second hit of the ball game. He's at first base with one out. Tigers now have out hit the Cardinals six to four. The Tigers may want a pinch runner. Somebody comes running out of that gate in left field. Like Pazuski. Willie Horton leaves the game. And it is Dick Pazuski who's running into the Tiger dugout. Kurt, while I have a moment, I certainly want to thank you and Tony Kubek and all the fellows. I mentioned this as many as I as they came to mind a little earlier, but the courtesies are much appreciated. Well, we appreciate that. And <clears throat> thank you and also George Kell, who did such an outstanding job, the telecaster of the Tigers. Here's the pitch, and Jim Northrup takes a curveball low and outside. Northrup got the decisive hit as of now. Wow, 
foul out of play. Northrop has tied K line for RBIs with eight. Had a grand slam homer yesterday. Had a triple with two on today. Pass ball low. Ground ball up the middle through a hit. Here's Przyski racing to third, and he'll make it. And the Tigers threaten to add more. With runners at first and third, only one out here in the top of the ninth. And Bill Freehand, who's had one out of three driving in a run today, coming to the plate. Freehand's had only two hits in the series, but each is driven in a run. Popped up, foul territory of Cepeda. Come on. We also want to give credit to the commissioner of baseball, William D. Eckert, Joe Reichler, the director of public relations, Charlie Seeger, the secretary treasurer, and Monty Irvin, the commissioner's office. The job they've done in the series to Bing Devine, Jim Tooney of the Cardinals, Shane Deans, the manager, and to Augie Bush, the owner. Here's Don Worth, line drive, base hit, a run is in. Worth singles to center. He's had two hits in the series, both were on Bob Gibson. It's four to nothing Detroit now. Listen to the hand for Mickey Lulich. Pops it up. Short center. Javier there. Takes it. And it's one run, three hits. No errors, two left. Going to the bottom half of the ninth inning. It's Detroit four, St. Louis nothing. This bank began the year Canada began and grew along with Canada. All along the way, Wherever history was being made, the commerce was there. Reliable, progressive, a real working bank. Serving the loggers, the miners, the oil men. For example, the commerce oil map in Calgary maintains an up-to-the-minute picture of who's drilling where, what's good, what's promising, an important service to customers at Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce. One of the world's great banks. Defensive moves being made. Aller goes to shortstop. Stanley moves to center field, and Northrop to left field. So Ray Arler's at shortstop, Nicky Stanley in center, and Jim Northrop is in left. Lolich going the bottom of the ninth has a four to nothing lead. Kurt Flood leading off. First pitch is a fastball strike. I know the Tiger owner, John Fetzer, an old boss of mine, Worked in Kalamazoo, must be happy, along with the general manager, Jim Campbell, and publicity director, Hal Middlesworth. Here's a slow curve, strike two. Mickey Lulich has a four to nothing lead over Bob Gibson and the St. Louis Cardinals. Foul tip. Lulich now has pitched 16 straight scoreless innings against the Cardinals. Bottom of the ninth. 
Cardinals have only scored two runs here in their last three games. The curve is low. Two strikes and a ball. The Tigers out hit the Cardinals eight to four. Line drive and Oiler makes the grab. That Tiger infield has played some game behind Lowlich today. They have fielded it brilliantly. Here's Cepeda with one away. The Tigers have shown the world why they won the American League pennant. And they have roared from behind against the defending world champion St. Louis Cardinals to a point where they're two outs away from replacing them. Popped up. Cepeda on the first pitch. Free and under the ball. He got it. Tiger fans who are here are on their feet. And I imagine Bedlam will break loose when this final out is completed. Gonna be some automobile horns squawking in the Motor City. Mike Shannon is nothing out of three. Fastball low. High. All two. Two balls, no strikes, two out. The Detroit Tigers, one out away from the World's Championship. Fastball in there. Hey, we can't see the bullpen. Uh, the Tiger bullpen delegation is no longer out there. They're, they're beyond the wall, but they're looking through a gate. But I don't believe they've had a man warming up today. So uh, confident have they been in Lowell. There's a long drive. Back near the wall, Northrop, but it's out of here for a whole run. And the Cardinal fans have their first chance to cheer. Mike Shannon makes it four to one. Shannon now has hit one home run in each of the three World Series he's been in. One against the Yankees in 64. One against the Red Sox last year. And one against the Tigers today. Here's McCarver now. There you get a look at the Tiger player in the bullpen. And they'll be racing for the playing field. McCarver pops up. Here's Freehan. Detroit's the new world champion. And look at Freehan picking up Lulich. <laughs> and there is a scene that has been repeated many times in World Series history. It's a happy bunch of Tigers. They have beaten the Cardinals 4-1, to one, and they have replaced them as the champions of baseball. And they made some comeback. They were trailing three games to one. They were behind three runs in the first inning of game five. They came back to win. They walked in here and murdered the Cardinals yesterday. They win again today, and 28-year-old Mickey Lowlich now has joined Christy Matthewson, Jack Coombs, Babe Adams, Stan Kovaleski, Harry Burkeen, Lou Burdett, and Bob Gibson as pitchers who have won three games and lost none in the World Series. And Lowlich did it with two days rest and beat Bob Gibson to do it. Some feet. Well, there's the uh, Tiger Clubhouse, the final score.
Detroit four, St. Louis one. And the total four eight and one for Detroit. Lowlich the winner, three and zero oh in the series. One five and zero oh for the Cardinals. Gibson the loser, two and one in the series. Well. Hello, you technical masterpiece, you. This time, people are going to see what goes on inside a 69 Plymouth Fury, not just how beautiful you are. All the time we engineers spend giving you more room inside. And this gorgeous, unitized body. Mm. Oh, sure it's gorgeous, because we give it a seven-step dip and spray anti-rust treatment. And who's going to tell about the big brakes if I don't? And an enormous trunk. And the magnificent chrome steel torsion bars. Wait a second. Beauty is only skin deep. Oh, that's hard and it's bigger, better, more beautiful than the Furies that helped win more competitive car owners over the Plymouth in the last two years. The all-new, bigger, better, 1969 Fury. Radio and television to you baseball fans around America. They've been with... NBC in the World Series since 1939. Right now, we're going to the Tiger Clubhouse and to the Tiger broadcaster, Ernie Harwell. Thank you very much. We're in the Tiger Clubhouse and a wild celebration for the new world champions. And here is the commissioner of baseball, William Eckert, and he has a special presentation to manager Mayo Smith, owner president John Petzer, general manager Jim Campbell. Mr. Commissioner, it's yours. I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. Mayo, congratulations on one of the greatest comeback victories in the history of the series. I want to congratulate you, John Fetzer, the players, Jim Camel, all the Detroit Tiger organization for this great series triumph. You certainly won it from a great Cardinal team, and in recognition of this great achievement, I want to present you a beautiful World Series trophy here today. Well, thank you, Commissioner. God. Hey, here it is. Well, Commissioner, thank you very much. On behalf of the players, uh, Mr. Fetzer and Jim Campbell and all the Detroit organization, and uh, this is a very, very happy day for all of us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mayo Smith. Mayo? Well, we've got you up here now. Were there any special instructions to the fellows before the game? Did you have a meeting or anything no, like no, that? No, Ernie, no. There was no special instructions, no. Uh, when did you feel that this series uh, made its turn in favor of the Tigers? What well, special game? I think it was the fifth game in the seventh inning when we, when we came from behind uh, after being down three runs in the first inning, and we went on to win it five to three, and that's when K-Line got his base. That's right, hit. that's right. And then what about... The, the game today, I guess it was a hit by Northrop, wasn't it? Well, of course, yeah, but Mickey does such a great job to keep us in there. We felt that if we could stay to Gibson, you know, uh, uh, in the latter innings, we, we'd have a chance of getting him because he pitches a lot of, he pitches a lot of baseball, and uh, uh, we were just fortunate enough to, as I say, to sort of break it loose in the seventh inning. Well, congratulations, Mayo. I know you're going to be very busy. We want to talk to some of the players. Let's see if we can find... Uh, Denny McLean's right here, a fellow who won the game yesterday, came back and kept the Tigers in it, and uh, I guess you're very well, we've been doing Well, we've been doing this all year, Ernie. There's no time to stop now. It's just fantastic. Just, this is bigger than winning a pennant. It's unbelievable. Denny, uh, what, what were you down. doing uh, when uh, Northrop hit that ball? Where were you, out in the bullpen? Out in the bullpen, yeah. right. And did you get a good look at it? Yeah, Floyd misjudged the ball. Yeah. That's what happened. He slipped on a play or something, but, but that's where we've been winning games, waiting for other clubs to make mistakes, or anything. We proved it again today. Well, you've been great champions. Thank you, Denny great McLean. Team. we got Willie Horton here. Willie? Willie, you came through with a big single in that uh, rally, and I know you must be feeling very happy I right feel now. real good, Ernest. You know, we they on the radio, and they think we couldn't do it. We came back after we was down, and just feel great. It and you beat one of the real tough pitchers in baseball in uh, Mr. Bob Gibson, didn't you? That's true. Now we number one. <laughs> well, congratulations, <laughs> Willie Horton. Now we've got the veteran on the Tiger team, Al Kaline. 
It took him 16 yeah. years to get in the World Series, and I know it's been a terrific thrill for you. Ann. Oh, it really has, Ernie. Uh, we, you know, our club came back again and won three games in a row, and uh, the St. Louis Ball Club is a great, great ball club, and Gibson's probably the greatest pitcher I ever faced. But this has been the secret of our ball club all year long. We came back, and we got a great job out of Mickey Lloyd. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Al, and thank you. have a nice rest of the year. Well, You're now a member of the world's champions, and here's the fellow who won the third game in the, the World Series, his third victory, Mickey Lovitz. And Mickey, it has been fantastic what you have done. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you very much. I really don't have too much to say right now. I really don't. Did you feel very tired? Did you feel like that you might be uh, losing your stuff toward the late innings? I never got tired in the game. I, I was weak almost from about the third inning on. I didn't have the real good, hard fastball that I do know how to throw. As you notice, most of the balls today were hit on the ground. I was throwing a sinking fastball all day. I didn't have the good hard fastball. I had uh, fairly good control, not as good as I usually like. But uh, I kept making the ball sink, and I got him out. The fact that you were tired helped that ball sink a little more, you think? Right, it helped a lot. By being tired, it causes the ball to sink more. Now, what about uh, you had a little conference on the mound right at the end. Did Mayo come out and ask if you had enough gas left to go or what? No, he says he just wanted to slow me down. He says he thought maybe I was getting too excited out there about, you know, mm -hmm. having it so close to coming to the end. He says, I want you to take it easy, relax, and throw like you've been throwing all day. All right. Well, thank you, Mickey. It was a great performance, and have a very nice, quiet winter. Okay. And we'll be back in Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis in one minute. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Feel confident. Stay dry with new Right Guard Antiperspirant, a completely new product from Right Guard. Right Guard Antiperspirant is a new defense against perspiration. It contains a tested agent that checks perspiration wetness. Feel confident. Stay dry. Get new Right Guard Antiperspirant in the silver can. Ten more blades to go. Five blades to go. Three, just three blades to go. That's it. I used up all the old blades. Now I can use the new Gillette Super Stainless Steel Blade with the Miracle Plastic Coating on the edge. They say it's supposed to spoil you. The spoiler. Sport Magazine uh, awards the, the most valuable player in the World Series, the Dodge Charger GT. And this uh, year, the award goes to the fellow we just talked to, Mickey Lolich, the three-victory pitcher of the Detroit Tigers. And now it's our pleasure to introduce the American League president with a big smile on his face. It's nice to have well, a winner, Mr. Joe Cronin. Ernie, I'm speechless. Uh, this was a terrific series, I want to tell you, uh, and I know how you must feel after all being with the Tigers day in and day out, spring training on, but it was a great thing for a great game of baseball. Mickey Lolick and all those Tigers are just a great credit to our game. Well, thank you, Mr. Joe Cronin, and, and the Tiger organization is one of the tops in baseball. Thank you very much, and nice to have you with us. And here's a young man named Dick McAuliffe. Hello, Ernie. Uh, it's, it's great to be with the world's champion, it's, I imagine, It's Richard. the greatest feeling in the world, Ernie. Uh, and uh, <laughs> where'd you get that hat, anyway? This is Campbell's hat, and I stole it from him, and I told him uh, if we win this thing, I want this hat, and he gave it to me. He, he's got hey! to buy, buy it back from you right now. No, he's not going to have this time again. We well, really, we really well you're getting it. a little heckling from Bill Freehand. Let's get him up here, and then somebody else can heckle him a little bit. Here's a fellow who sparked the Tigers throughout the year, Bill Freehand. He had a little... And here's a young man named Dick McAuliffe. Hello, uh, Ernie. It's, it's great to be with the world's champion, I it's, imagine, Richard. It's Richie. the greatest feeling in the world, Ernie. Uh, and uh, <laughs> where'd you get that hat, anyway? This is Campbell's hat, and I stole it from him, and I told him uh, if we win this thing, I want this hat, and he gave it to me. He, he's got hey! to buy, buy it back from you right now. No, he's not going to have this time again. We well, really, we really well you're getting it. a little heckling from Bill Freehand. Let's get him up here, and then somebody else can heckle him a little bit. Here's a fellow who sparked the Tigers throughout the year, Bill Freehand. He had a little trouble with the bat right at first, and uh, then he got a couple of uh, hits to help us along. Bill, congratulations on being on the new world champion. Thank you, Ernie. It's a tremendous thrill. I, I thought maybe winning the, the pennant was the biggest thrill of my life, but I think maybe, I, I know this is. It's, it's beautiful. I, we've come back from behind all year, and we did it again. I never thought we could, but we did, and uh, I don't know. A lot of people must have been praying for us. 
Bill, how did you feel about Lolich when he started? Did you think he had his stuff? Did you think he could last? Well, I started to worry maybe in the middle innings. It looked like he was getting a little tired, but he's got a, a whole lot of guts. Mm -hmm. And he just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting. And we finally got some runs off Gibson, and he just got tougher after that. <clears throat> Well, uh, he didn't have uh, too many strikeouts going for him, but uh, he seemed to be putting the ball where he wanted to, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was keeping the ball down low. Basically, he didn't expect him to have super abilities today, but he, 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 we talked before the game and said, you know, we're going to basically try to keep the ball down, and, and he did, and he got a guy to hit the ball on the ground at somebody, and uh, that's a secret of the game. Well, thank you, Bill Freehan, and uh, best of luck to you. Now we've got uh, Jim Northrup. And, uh, Jim, you figured in the key play of the World Series, I believe, the three-base hit that scored the two runs to put the Tigers in the lead. You can see the replay now where Kurt Flood uh, comes in, seems to trip and uh, fall. Then the ball's over his head, and uh, the runs come in, and uh, you get into third base. And that was the key play. Did you feel like uh, the ball was going to go a long ways when you hit it? Well, Arnie, I hit the ball real good. I hit it hard and on a line, and it was a little bit to the left center of Flood, and... I didn't know for sure if it'd get over his head because I know he plays deep, but uh, I knew I'd hit it good and it had a chance. And when I see it go over his head, I'm the happiest person alive right then. I am right now, too. That's got to be even a bigger thrill than your grand slam home run of yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure is, Ernie. I'm a, I, it's the biggest thrill I've ever had, and uh, it's the type of ball club we've had all year. We've been behind before, and we keep coming back. We don't ever give up, and uh, we proved it again today. Jim, what about the ball that uh, you and Horton converged on in the outfield? It seemed to hit your glove and bounce away, did did uh, you have uh, trouble uh, waving Willie off, or he have trouble waving you off, or what happened on that? I couldn't hear Willie, and he couldn't hear me. I was yelling all the way, and I happened to pick him up just as I went for the ball, and I didn't want to run over him, so I tried to uh, veer off and still catch the ball and hit in the end of my glove and drop. So uh, it was just one of those things where the crowd is yelling, and, and you can't hear each other out there. And, and I, 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 when I saw Willie, I should have gotten out of the way, but I didn't want to let it drop. It was my fault, and it was an error, and I... I, I thought I could get around him and catch the ball anyway, but it doesn't matter now. We won it. Well, Jim Northrup, when you came to the clubhouse today, did you have the feeling that the Tigers would win this game? I sure did. Eddie Matthews and I were talking with our wives last night, and uh, I, I said, Eddie, I got a feeling we're going to win this thing tomorrow. And Eddie says, I do too. He says, I don't get a feeling very often, but he says, I got a feeling we're going to beat them. And I just had a good feeling that we were going to beat these guys, and, and uh, I'm awful happy we did. Well, thank you, Jim. Let's talk to another Jim now, the player representative of the Tigers, the fine catcher. Jim Price. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie. I, I just like to express uh, from the members of the team how grateful we are to the people of Detroit and the state of Michigan for supporting us like they did. We feel that uh, they sort of pulled us together and we maybe helped pull them together a little bit. Well, I think that's wonderful and I'm sure that it's uh, true from both sides, Jim. Uh, uh, thank you, Ernie. It's, uh, all the guys asked me to do this and uh, we're, just, we're, just, we're just glad we won it for them and the people around the country. Well, it's nice of you to come up here and we appreciate that comment and I know that the Tigers have become a behind team all the way, and our congratulations. Thank you very much. And now let's go upstairs. All right, thank you. And uh, Ernie Harwell was talking about coming from behind. The Tigers now become the third team in the history of the World Series to come back from a three-game-to-one deficit. The Pirates in 1925 came back to win after trailing three games to one. The Yankees were trailing the Braves in 1958, and they came back from three games to one. And when the Tigers were behind three to nothing in the first inning of game five, when they looked so bad against the Cardinals in their own ballpark, in fact, a few of their fans were even booing them, uh, Harry, on Sunday in the rain, uh, to come back, match the type of team it was. They won over 40 games during the regular season behind from the seventh inning on. Well, the two, two champions hooked up here, and uh, Detroit now is the new champion, Kurt, and they've earned the title. It's been a great series. They have power up and down their lineup, and Lolich, of course, is supreme. I was interested in his winning the, uh, uh, the Sport Magazine Award for the Outstanding Player of the Year of this series, and he certainly was that, although he wasn't alone. There were many men, Northrop and Kaline, Cash, without too much publicity, and you can't overlook the play of Stanley at shortstop. To me, that's the most remarkable thing in the World Series, that a fellow who's a great defensive center fielder can move into shortstop at the start of a World Series with all that pressure and do the kind of job he did. My hat is certainly off to Stanley and to the Tigers. All right, Harry, nice job. Thank Good you very much. You again, and uh, we'll see you in spring training next year. I hope so. All right. Thank you. Harry Kurt, Carey, bye -bye. telecaster of the Cardinals. Incidentally, I think probably the truest statement made before this series, as it turned out, a real prophet, Mayo Smith, who made all the right moves for the series, when they asked him what would happen if the Tigers came down to game seven 
and you had to face Bob Gibson. He said, well, boys, Gibson's a great, great pitcher, but he's still only a human being. Someday he's got to be beat. And as it turned out, the Tigers did finally beat him. That play will be talked about for years. I'd be anxious to talk to Kurt Flood to see if he did misjudge the ball in center or did he stumbling and catching his spikes allow Northrop's drive to sail over him in center field. But you'll be hearing about that after the game. So the Tigers win the World Series. Lolich wins his third game of the series. He beats Gibson here today. And the final score was Detroit 4 and St. Louis 1. The seventh game of this 1968 World Series has been brought to you by... Chrysler Canada Limited and the Dodge, Plymouth, Roots, and Simca dealers who sell the quality engineered cars and trucks by Chrysler. By Gillette, makers of new right guard antiperspirant in the silver can. By the more than 1,350 branches in Canada of the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Thank <laughs> you. 